Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. Today I'm joined by Danny Oliver, a top international Michael Jackson tribute artist who has performed for Michael himself and travels around the world performing and captivating his audience with his dance moves. Also today, a young rap artist and songwriter joins me to talk about his life as a rap artist and what it means to him. We welcome Vital. My first guest today is someone that regularly commands the stage with the infamous moves of the legend that is Michael Jackson. His flair, energy and passionate performances take him around the world and I'm very pleased to say he's dropped in to be with us at the studios today. Let's welcome Danny Oliver. Thank you Danny for coming on to Cup of TV. Thank you for having me. Wonderful to have you here. Thank so, you. I mean Michael Jackson, I mean I don't think anybody doesn't know of Michael Jackson. Uh, incredible. He's, he's an incredible, incredible man. He's, he's so universally, uh, he, he's a universal figure, mm. he's universally appealing, mm. you know. Um, and a great loss when we lost him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's go back, Danny. So how did it all begin for you? How did you begin to become, you know, you are a professional lookalike yes. Michael Jackson. And for those of you watching might be thinking, <laughs> he doesn't look like Michael Jackson today. Well, we have some images for you to show you. <laughs> it does, you take a lot of makeup. Mm. How long does it take you to, to do your makeup? Um, about two hours, mm. I would say. I've got it down to about two hours now. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> so Danny, how did it all begin? Well, uh, you know, I've always loved and admired Michael Jackson since before I can remember. I've always been captivated and mesmerized by his artistry. And um, so I'd always be doing it at home, you know, watching, studying Michael on the, uh, on the VHS, you know, and, uh, and performing shows in school and mm -hmm. different holiday parks. Um, and then I, I did my first overseas show at nine, but I began performing, um, being paid, at 14, I started to work for Madame Two Swords and Rock Circus, mm. and I did shows for them. I would do school Monday to Friday, and then Friday to Sunday, I'd go down and do shows for them. And, uh, and then it just really expanded and grew from there. I did my first uh, show in New York at 14. Gosh, um, yeah, that's incredible yeah, to be in New York at 14. Absolutely. And, um, you know, so I did my first show there when I was 14, um, and, and then I started going around Europe, like Munich, um, when I was 14 also, and it just really, really grew. And then uh, by the time I was 17 uh, or 18, I had performed for Michael twice in London and in New York. Wow. Yeah. And you've actually met Michael, haven't you? Yeah, I've been very blessed. So tell us about that. How did that come about? Well, um, initially, uh, Michael was staying uh, in a private residence uh, in Park Lane um, in London, and uh, a friend of mine had a friend in Sony Music and so we were very fortunate Michael came out and uh, spent, my friend and I and a few others spent two hours talking to him and it was, and I was 14 at the time and you know people would always like say to me what do you want to do when you, when you, you know, when you grow up and yes. what do you want to do when you go to school? Yeah. I would say I don't care as long as I meet Michael Jackson, yes. you know, <laughs> that was my life's aim and like, it literally it just happened. It's good enough aim. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, and um, yeah, and it was incredible. I spent two hours with him, and ever since then, uh, I spent more and more time with him. And uh, over you know ten years, uh, just recognition really built. I spent more time with him. He started calling me on a name basis. We spoke on the telephone. He had invited me to Neverland. Was that a bit surreal? Did you think when, this you know, isn't happening to me? When I think back to it, mm. I, it's just like another world, mm. another life really like another dimension i mean it's i'm completely blessed and uh it's incredible and you i mean you were invited to netherlands so tell us yeah. about that well um i had made and designed a jacket for for michael uh in about 2000 2001 uh and he took a real big liking to that and then i had made another one for him which was which was very well known i mean um i it i achieved with it exactly as i had uh, planned, which was that it would kind of send uh, the media off into a little frenzy yes. because of its content. And uh, by the time I came back to London, it was, it was all over the papers. And so Michael pulled up in his Bentley, in his black Bentley. He had just come home from taking his eldest son, Prince, uh, to the dentist. 
and he wound down his window, and he said, come on, you gotta come in, get in your car, let's go, come on. And um, yeah, and I had some friends that worked there, and they said, can't say no to Jump Michael in the Jackson. car, <laughs> coming in. And it was just, I mean, wow, it was, it was unbelievable. Now we've so got lucky. some images of this jacket, so for yes. at home, we've got. So that's the one we're looking at. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, the the markings on it. Um, mm. What do they represent? Well, actually, the uh, the the armband on the on the right mm. arm, that's uh, actually a symbol of unity. Mm. I believe it used to be the the old uh, Egyptian flag. Mm. It resembles something like that. Fantastic. Uh, but that. That one there is, yes. is, is one that I frequently perform uh, with, wow. which is replicated from Michael's stage jackets. But the one that I had designed for him yeah. is, is different to, to that Fantastic. one. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. And I mean, so you went to Netherlands. You actually mm -hmm. went to Netherlands, did you? Yeah. And it's, uh, wow, it's like walking inside of his imagination. I mean, it's, it's the most beautiful, magical uh, place. It really, truly, truly is. Mm. Um, you know, the, the, there's music playing everywhere, uh, all this very magical, very theatrical music, and all the speakers are disguised as rocks, so you can't see them coming mm. from anywhere. And uh, Michael has his amusement park. Mm. Um, and another interesting thing as well was that uh, there were Christmas decorations everywhere. And I think he had it decorated um, in, in the theme of Christmas, because when he was uh, younger, he never had to experience the joy mm. of Christmas. I mean, the family worked. I mean, he worked from a very young age, Michael yeah. Jackson. I think we forget that. Absolutely. You know, so, you know, he probably felt that he, perhaps he did miss out on some things. Yeah, and he... that was documented, hasn't it, that he felt that he absolutely. had missed out on a lot of his childhood because of his work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. I mean, you know, at an age when most people are trying to figure out which foot goes, which shoe goes into mm. which foot, or, you know, how to tie up your shoelaces, he was out, you know, entertaining, mm. you know, thousands of people per show. Mm. And at the same time, he was he was, you know, um, you know, missing out on, on friends and you know the the normal joys of childhood. Like the childhood. normal joys of childhood, absolutely. Absolutely. And he, he he did you know he he really did as much as he could to try and compensate for everything that he had missed out on. And you know, uh, in Neverland, you can really see that there are amusement park rides everywhere, carousel, and but that's also because anywhere he goes. You know, he really can't do anything without getting hounded or mm. there being a huge mob of fans or some kind of you know, hysteria. So mm. he can do all that behind his gates. So with your performances, Danny, I mean, you know, they're incredible. They have taken you around the world and you've really taken on his dance moves and the persona. Yeah. And again, we've got some pictures here of you on the stage. I mean, I mean that looks like Michael Jackson. <laughs> so <laughs> that's Thank always a good you. thing, isn't it, when you're yeah. a professional lookalike? That's, that's kind of the aim. <laughs> that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, so do you, you, you presumably, I mean, just have to get inside his head and you, do you become Michael Jackson? And when you put the makeup on and the clothes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. You know, um, you really take on the heart of that that person. Mm. And um, for me as well, personally, it's it's, it's a, really a very spiritual thing because of my my deep lifelong admiration and passion for Michael Jackson. And so um, yeah. you could be real tired, and you just yeah. you just feel this sense of. Yeah. Energy, you yeah, know. I mean, there's some more in images going up now, and it, it's just incredible. I mean, the look, the, they look so like Michael Jackson. Thank so, you. Um, you yeah, know. I mean, you know, the audience. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have a good time. The Which audience are very sweet, and they, they have a good time. So you're doing lots of things. I mean, you, you've got. We, I know you performed twice in New York and London, of course. Yeah, but for you, my you know, you've got a recent um, with Celine, your wife. You've got a recent um, event coming up, haven't you? Tell us about that. Yeah, we are uh, Selena, uh, my wife, who is Selena Cherry from uh, the group The Honeys. Yes. Uh, recently featured on the Big Reunion. Um, we have a big uh, Michael Jackson. Extravagant show coming up at the Stockport Plaza on October 14th. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for any further information, you can simply yeah. email info at yeah. mjeternity.com. Okay, and they can get in contact with the station if people are interested in doing it. Yeah, that. yeah, I believe to get in, uh, to, to, to go direct about uh, tickets and, and that information, it's uh, stockportplaza.co.uk. Okay, it's great. But I mean, there's loads and loads of other things. When I was, you've done so much, you know, it, it's just incredible, really. I mean, you, you actually performed at Katie Price's.
wedding. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. Know, uh, which was just great. Yeah, it was and, wonderful. Uh, we had a and great time. And also Carrie Katona. Yeah, so, yes. most recently did, yeah. did Carrie's wedding. Yes. And, uh, uh, you know, was, that, that was covered by OK Magazine. Mm. Um, and we, we had a great time. I mean, it was wonderful. There were all these, uh, you know, uh, who of course are our friends now, yes. but, you know, in the 90s and early 2000s, you know, were all these very, 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 very popular um, chart-topping groups. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, and of course still very popular now to, um, to many people. And, uh, yeah, they were just all watching and, and uh, applauding and everyone had a great time. And she, she, was, she was so uh, overjoyed by it. Yeah, afterwards she said... I think I kind of fancy her now, Danny. You know? <laughs> I think that was more of a Scottish accent, yeah. sorry. That was my That's attempt right. to do a Northern That's accent. Right. Don't worry about it. Well, Danny, you know, it's just a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure thank to meet you. you. I yeah, have to say, you're going to you have so to come much. back and, and tell us some more. I would love to. Because it's so interesting. Thank, thank you. you. to Cup of TV. My next guests are two people who love experimenting in explosions and have brought some very interesting scientific equipment along. Please welcome Jasmine Hanlon and Ryan Westwood from Mad Science. Welcome guys, thank you so thank much. You, thank you, I'm just really thinking, oh, <laughs> and I've already got one of these on my finger. <laughs> so Jasmine, first of all, tell us about what your involvement with Mad Science and what actually is Mad Science. So Mad Science is, is just what it says in the tin. We are mad, we're a science um, educational entertainment company, which basically means we go and to schools we make science fun for children so mm. we launch rockets we do dry ice experiments we do mini explosions things just to make it fun for children to engage uh, in science really fantastic and ryan your involvement in it obviously look bad scientists yep. on your lap <laughs> so <laughs> looking the part so what what do you do ryan i do all sorts i'm actually the operations manager of the company so i get all the equipment ready for oh. everybody all over the west midlands as well as that i'm also a pro presenter so i do any presenting that we do, so be it corporate, schools, summer camps, after school clubs, you name it, I've probably done it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're based here in the West Midlands. We are, yeah. And you go all across. We do, all yeah, we go on. all over schools, all over the West Midlands, and there are franchises out of the West Midlands as well, but, but we're mainly focused on... Fantastic. Uh, all right, guys, come on then. <laughs> right I can't then. Wait. Show us what Fantastic. you're going to do today. Okay, right? so Talk we've got through. three different things to show you. Okay. We're going to start off nice and easy, nice Fabulous. and basic. Yes. We're going to go to something nice and big at the end. Wonderful. So we're going to start off with something called flash paper. Okay. Uh, so what we normally do in our schools is we'll speak to the children and we'll ask them what do they normally see when we burn paper. And obviously the answer will be, we'll see you. Wasn't That's right. all right. That's <laughs> we'll happened. see smoke, we'll see fire, and we'll see ashes. Yes. So what we do is we have this special paper. This is called flash paper. And okay. what we do is, do you want to give me a nice big countdown? Guys? Oh, three, three two, two, one. one. And as oh. you can see, it completely disappeared. Oh. I knew some of that paper. That's amazing. So the kids always love one, that one. Uh, the reason it completely disappears is because it's covered in highly flammable chemicals. So it burns right. that fast that nothing is left behind. It completely disappears. Do you want to see one more? Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Considering that first one fell on the floor, Absolutely. we might as well yes, try we another one. Okay, right there. Bigger countdown this Go time, on, please, guys. Three, three two, one. Ooh. That is incredible. <laughs> that's very Harry Potter. It is. It is. Yeah. 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 Yes, that's it. That's the thing is the kids love it because they think it's almost magical. Yes. But yes. No, cool. that's amazing. Brilliant. Okay, Excellent. so that's our first one. Our yes. second one is this. Okay, oh. I know you've been looking forward to this one. Now this is where I'm involved. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. So what, what do I need to do? Uh, well, this is the Van de Graaff generator. What we're going to do is we're going to create. Explain what. It, tell us what it is again. It's a Van, it's a Van de Graaff generator. A Van de Graaff generator. That's right. Okay. So what this belt inside do? is going to spin around and around and around. It's going to create okay. loads of static electricity. Take this off. <laughs> Thank you. It's yes. a good idea. And all you need to do is put your hands on the ball. Make sure you keep your hands on. Don't okay. take them off. Okay. Keep them on. And okay. what should happen is the static electricity <laughs> is going to go through your body Slightly and nervous. make your hair stand on end. <laughs> so. Just blow up the cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> just don't take your hands off. That's it. Very important. Keep your hands on. Don't take them off. Okay. okay. Right then. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. So you can oh, feel it tingling. Can you, no, you can definitely you can, Your hair's starting to bounce up. <laughs> <laughs> this is Brilliant. my new look. Like, <laughs> the TV. The things I do. Oh, that's, you know, you can actually feel. Yeah, and look at your hands. arm hairs as well. Hair. So what's, just explain what's happening. So this right. is static electricity. It's being built up. It's caused by friction. So two surfaces rubbing together. So that belt inside is spinning a little copper plate. 
creating loads of friction, which is building up inside that ball, going into you, flowing through your body. And what it does is it repels your hair away from your body, just like a magnet would. It attracts and it repels. I can feel my hair. It's my hair standing. It right is right at the yeah. front. People can do it at home with a balloon yeah. on their head. Yes, that's right. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same like a friction. Exactly like that. That's incredible. Fantastic. So keep your hands on. Don't okay. take them off. Oh no, are we going. Oh, oh. <laughs> hands up. There we go. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Good job. That was great. Okay. That's so cool. Yeah, we see the kids would love that. How about adults? I've enjoyed that. Yeah. So, that's, uh, yes. so now we have our grand finale. So this is something that we do. It's very, very popular. This is something yes. called elephant's toothpaste. Uh, yes. It involves a number of different chemicals. So I'm going to get myself ready with my gloves. Absolutely. <laughs> And again, you know, don't try this at home. No, this don't is, try this, this is, at home. This is all <laughs> done in control. We're a controlled situation it here, is. and obviously you guys know what you're doing. Yeah, all the experiments we do, all the staff are specially trained. Yes. We have specialist equipment to be able yes. to do it. But it's great that we're able to go into schools and kids' homes yes. doing parties to be able to do this, and yes. they can see it in real Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Has my hair gone down now? It has, yeah. <laughs> it it has. Has. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to start off here is we're going to start off with something called hydrogen peroxide. Okay. So we're going to get this and pour it into our flask here, okay. like so. Fantastic. So the kids would love to watch these experiments, but and adults as well. You go into corporate business we do, as well, yeah, don't we you? We do a lot of corporate business so. um, where we do a lot of family events or exhibitions, and adults love it just as much as children because it's something that they might not have seen either. Well, we were talking with earlier on in the show with John Rushton, you know, talking about an inquiring mind, and this is really, um, you know, an inquiring mind. Definitely, isn't it? just definitely. finding out what's going to happen next. Oh, Ryan, sorry. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're two, we're two women. <laughs> That's all right. No worries. You, you tell us what you're doing. <laughs> so I'm going to get some bubbles next. I'm going to squirt these into here like so. So we've got our hydrogen peroxide and our bubbles. Okay. Put that out the way down here. Got my stirring run. I'm going to stir all that in. So you're just stirring those two together. Stirring those two things together. Now, we want a little bit of colour to this. So I've chosen a nice yellow. Mm. I was going to say, I like the green. The green. <laughs> just so, brightens it up a little yes, bit. Yes, absolutely. So that's just ordinary... Oh, just paint. That's, That's right. Just poster paint. Poster yeah. paint that you would use. Okay. Oh, it's looking very <laughs> tippy. <laughs> Yummy. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So that's all our stuff ready to go. What we're going to do now is we're going to add something called potassium iodide. Okay. And what this is going to do, it's going to create a chemical exothermic reaction, which means it's going to create a new substance, so it's a chemical reaction. And exothermic means it's going to create loads of heat. So, very important, don't touch the, uh, the foam. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. right then. So, three... Two, one. Oh. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> Look at that. And now, is that heat? <laughs> it is. That's heat. You can see this. That is heat. Yeah. That's fine. Don't worry. If it spills over, don't panic. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. But that is incredible. Now, again, what does this, what does this show to the children? Um, what, how, you know, what do you think that mad science actually gives to the children and to adults? It's making science fun, isn't it? And it's showing them that it, it's interactive. There's mm. loads of hands-on different things. It's not just about looking at a book and, and reading something. Mm. It's, it's about doing experiments. I think that's what we're mainly about, is yeah, being hands-on. I mean, all of our experiments uh, are related to the national curriculum. So they'll be learning about it in a theory base in schools anyway. But we just bring it to life and we show mm. them how it's used in real life, in real science labs, and how to make it more fun to, to remember it especially for those year sixes yes. who are doing SAT. Yes. And again, I always think, um, from, you know, visual sometimes works, doesn't Definitely. it? You can read about it in a yeah. textbook and you can read about it, you know, in, in your books that they give you, but seeing it in real life exactly. is, is, is worth it. And what about schools, you know, science on the curriculum? You know, are there schools now that don't have science on the curriculum? Yeah, so primary schools, it's not actually a core subject. They don't have to do it. They do it as a topic. So we have a lot of schools that will bring us in to be able to do this because mm. we have specialist equipment that the teachers won't have. Uh, and like I say, the children won't have seen it because it's not yes. something they do on a day-to-day on -day basis. So it's really important that they learn this before going mm. to secondary school because, as you know, they have to do it then as a, yes. as a, as a topic. As a, as, yeah. a sub, as a subject. Exactly. And for, for viewers at, at home watching, I mean, that's just cool. <laughs> I just love that. It's that still massive. going. It's, like, it's, it's, it's still bubbling there. It's, it's just fantastic. Away. It's still going okay. until we stop it. So what's happening there? The chemicals are just reacting. Just give us a little bit of science. So basically, a chemical reaction is when two sub uh, substances mix together and you create a new substance. Mm. So that's exactly what we've done here. We've made gas bubbles. We've created a whole new substance it's completely changed yes. but as I said it's also called an exothermic which means it's created heat so as you can see with all the, the, the heat yeah the heat coming off it, it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know when you put your hand near it as well did you feel yes, it was I very, it was it was very, very warm yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> again that's just because the two, the two, the two they react materials with each other. just reacted yep. 
Fantastic. Now tell us what these lovely little lights are. I have one on my finger <laughs> earlier. So let me just pass over one of these lights to you. Should we grab this? We'll yeah. grab that one. Yeah. Yeah. Just in that case. Was a, that was a catch. <laughs> yeah. Yes. These are so, basically just, all these are, these are LED lights. We use them when we do um, different experiments with children. Yes. Um, especially when we're using diffraction glasses, mm -hmm. um, which shows them uh, basically that the light is dispersed into, into yes. different colours, um, and we use them for that. Fantastic, but they look just great, don't they? They do, they and look do brilliant. Do you find in the that when you go, you know, talk to whatever, adults, children, do you find that they are engaged with you? Do they, do they learn? I mean, yeah. it's not just about, you know, we've done some wonderful things here yeah. very quickly this morning, but, you know, do they actually learn and come? back and want to know more yeah definitely i mean the experiments that we've done today obviously uh, are too dangerous for children to do and we've done it just so we can show you course, guys and yes. we'll do them in shows but a lot of the experiments we do well 99 percent of the experiments we do are actually safe for children to do mm -hmm. so the children actually get hands oh, so on, actually hands hands on yeah. involved with so it. we bring lab kits for every single child when we go into a school and they actually do it themselves so they kind of end up looking like ryan yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Goggles not a bad thing and gloves <laughs> yeah. their hair crazy good. but yes. yeah they actually do the experiments for themselves yeah. so they definitely go away uh, we usually say remembering rather than yes, learning. Yeah. Right. But yeah, yes. they definitely remember what they've told us and they come mm. back and year on year to do after school clubs or parties with us. And, and just carry on and, and obviously Absolutely. it engages them. And then the, because there is a serious lack of science uh, and science scientists, yeah. I should say, um, yeah. in the world, yeah. I mean, that's been documented. So something like this, do you think it encourages people to get involved in science? It definitely does because, like I say, it's not what they think of as science. Mm. They think of science, you know, doing equations in their classrooms. Yes. And it's not, it is... Science is very much practical based. It is experimenting. It is just seeing what happens. Fantastic. And especially females in science. We yes. have, um, well, the majority of our staff are actually female mm. scientists. Thank, thank you. Cheers. Thank Thanks for having us. Thank Cheers. you. Right, that's it for today. I'd like to thank John, Jasmine and Ryan for joining me. We'd love to hear from you. So please get in touch either by email or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at Big Centre TV. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.